Welcome, welcome to Celebrate Aging. I'm Vicki Marthaler, your hostess here on the Ecumen Detroit Lakes campus that used to be for the longest time known as Emanuel. And so we're evolving and we're continuing to build and with me is my very good friend and predecessor, Pastor Arv Halverson. And we're talking, we're looking at pictures and talking about history since we're celebrating our 50 years here on the Ecumen Detroit Lakes campus. And Arv, you were here for the 25 year celebration. That I was. Let's t tell me about that. Uh, in the year 89, uh, we were celebrating the 25th and that become, became my responsibility as part of yours <laughs> for the 50th. <coughs> and uh, we were fortunate enough to secure the president of the church at that time, Dr. Price. Wow. And uh, he came for, uh, I think he, we, we, we had him come out and he, worship, he worshiped and preached at several of the churches in town. I bet. Together with a, a, a service here. We didn't have a big enough space to have a joint service, <laughs> but we would love to have done that. Uh, also, one of the things we did was to uh, involve all the churches, especially the Lutheran churches, the ELCA churches, or ALC at that time. No, 89 would have been ELCA. Uh, but anyway, we uh, talked to a number of the Sunday school people uh, leaders, mm -hmm. and we uh, wrote up a, one l lesson on aging to b bring out to all the Sunday school uh, children. Oh. And uh, we had, we ha even had some hankies that we made with the em emblem of Emmanuel on it. Okay. It was to indicate Emmanuel aging. And um, because I thought that word. The name Emmanuel is so meaningful for, it is meaningful. for us, and uh, we, we made good use of that. <clears throat> well, it, when it was named Emmanuel, which means God with us, right. uh, it had been during the building, the Detroit Lakes Retirement Home and other different generic names. So it's so wonderful to have a unique, special name like Emmanuel, and it certainly has come to mean a lot in this community. And. Uh, when I first came, I just felt that uh, that's what Emmanuel was, was knowing that God is here. Yeah. God is here. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> so when you first came, now that was 19, what? 86. 1986. Fall of 1986, we came on. And uh, as you said, we're the first full-time uh, mm -hmm. uh, chaplain. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, obviously the pastor's for Trinity before that had done a good job. That was their responsibility to line up the, set up the programming, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, because that's the neat thing about, even though it has the, the inspiration and the get going was from Trinity, a lot of it was from Trinity and from the Lutheran Church, all the churches in the community embraced it. Yes. Because I know the Methodist Church and the Baptist Churches and the Catholic Church are all a part of, of the ministry here. Uh, it was also <clears throat> important to recognize that the whole, whole community, some of the community yes. leaders, not necessarily the church leaders, right. but community leaders, were also highly involved in starting. Oh my Emmanuel. goodness, yes. Yeah. If yeah, it had been for that, it would never have happened. Right, this is a community built, and that's why we continue to serve the community so well, because it was built yeah. by the community for the community. And one of the enjoyable things for me when I first came on, well, all the years I was here, but I was, I was in, informed that one of the important aspects of my job was to reach out to all the churches. And so, uh, mm -hmm. We set up a, a program where I would uh, once a month get out and, and preach in, in, in one of the churches, local oh. churches. So I think I preached in at least a dozen of the churches <laughs> in the Detroit Lakes area, uh, including the Catholic Church. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Very ecumenical. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I may not have done, not have been a Sunday morning worship, may have been some kind of a program other sure. than the worship that I sure. spoke at but and uh, so and I I really I did a, I went to a lot of the a lot of the funerals that mm -hmm. were held in the various churches as you've mm -hmm. done I'm sure mm -hmm. and 
because I enjoyed singing, and I did a lot of singing here. I, I often was the singer for the funeral mm -hmm. uh, in these churches. Well, music continues to touch hearts. Even when people have dementia, music yeah. continues to touch hearts and to minister to people. So what a great gift you gave them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I think that also one of the uh, in, interesting things that I got involved in early on, and I can thank Lee Ferber for that. Where she was on staff at the time. She says, we need to do something for Alzheimer's people. Wonderful. And dementia people. And so it, with her, uh, we went to a conference on Alzheimer's and came back and uh, encouraged Emmanuel to start a program on Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you had a personal interest in that too, didn't you? Didn't your father? I did, yes. Yeah. My, my dad had Alzheimer's for about five years prior to wow. his death. And of course, the last couple of years, it was really, really significant. Mm -hmm. um, so you know firsthand that's not easy oh. to be a caregiver when you love someone and they have that diagnosis. And for me, of course, I was 200 miles away, so oh. my stepmother, bless her heart, was so good about taking care of Dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, But nevertheless, she'd call me every once in a while and say, can you do something? We need to make some changes. Oh. <laughs> you know? and, uh, so I'd make a trip up. And, See sure. how things are going and see what we could do. Talk to the doctor up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I want you to know that support group is still going very strong, and many, many families yeah. have been blessed by this invitation to just come and let's just talk about what's going on, that the caregivers are strengthened. They get education. Oh, yes. They get education. They get to talk with one another for that support. And I think the thing that I see the most, because I'm facilitating that group now and have for 19 years, is that they leave with hope. Yes. Not hope that it's going to be cured, but hope that we're going to get through this and, and that there are people standing with me and I'm not alone. It's a powerful, powerful group. Uh, that support thing from a, from a, a group getting together like that yes. and talking yes. and listening. Yes. It's amazing how some of these people would just come to listen, at least for the first two, three times. Yes. They wouldn't say much. No. But by the third, fourth time, then they'd be starting to open up a little bit. Well, and they just share from their heart. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was actually pretty nervous about the first couple times because <laughs> I thought, I, what do I know? You know, I, I was just kind of coming into it. But the great thing about a support group is that you just need to facilitate the talking. I don't have to be the expert. No. I just have no. to be the ears and the invitation to tell me more or, or what do you mean by that? I mean, it's it like it's powerful. So they minister to each other. And you and I learn from that. <laughs> yeah, you and I. That's right. I'm a wealth of knowledge now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so sure and uh, also during your time, you the chapel was built. Chapel. So you got your own special place. Yeah. It, uh, that was one of the things I had not uh, really bargained for. I didn't want to go into a building program, but I learned that this was fun because I didn't have to do all the backup work, uh, all the groundwork and all that. The, the, the administration took sure, care of that, and sure. I got involved from what are some things we need in this yeah, building, yes. you know, and that kind of thing. And I could do that aspect of yes. it and then just go along with it and support <laughs> So that was fun, and then of course I got the opportunity also to uh, actually my responsibility to design the mm -hmm. furnishings and so yes. on, to pick the furnishings. So I got lots of help on that. Lots of help. Yeah. Well, and it's still being used today. I tell you, our chapel is missed during this construction well, that, that we're enduring right now. But yeah. the day is coming soon when we'll be able to be worshiping in the chapel again. And Great. what a a sacred place, oh, a, yeah. a place set aside, uh, a holy place where people can come and, and just be encouraged as they go through the days of their life. And I think one of the things was so neat that they would come just individually and sit there. Yes, it is. It is sacred. So here we are just visiting about the past and knowing that uh, as the past has, has brought to us great treasure, so we continue to enjoy it yet to this day. Ecumen Detroit Lakes is celebrating 50 years, and Pastor R. Halverson is part of that 50 years, and we thank you for your part in it. And we continue to thank you, the community, for being the community here in Detroit Lakes. Have a blessed day.